Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and it's a, it's a great pleasure uh, to be here on this, on this very remarkable stage, <laughs> almost in the middle of the theater. Um, I was wondering when we're going to see the clip. I hope that's going to be now, but I'm not sure. Are we? Something happened on the day he died. Spirit rose on me, stepped aside. Some father took his place and prayed that he died. I'm a black soul. Last Sunday night. Last Sunday night, I was in a hotel in, in Ankara uh, preparing for my uh, meetings uh, on Monday. And at some point, because music is extremely important to me, as some of you might know, um, I decided I wanted desperately to listen to Black Star, uh, which had just come out two days uh, earlier. And I put it on my iPhone and was listening to it. And it starts surprisingly. And then four minutes into the song, you get this. Wham! David Bowie, who comes in and, and just blows you off your feet. And I, I couldn't stop listening to it. Uh, and later on, I listened to the other uh, um, song on the, on the record, which is called Lazarus, which is incredible. And on Monday morning, I heard he had, he had died. Uh, actually only about eight hours later, even less. And I was thinking about this 54-year-old man, me, sitting in a hotel in Ankara, preparing for a meeting, listening on my iPhone to, to David Bowie. And, and then I, I remembered um, exactly 44 years before that, I was an 11-year-old boy who had just moved to Rome in Italy um, from, from Belgium. And, my father and mother had given me, for the move, a, a, a small Philips cassette recorder, which was the newest thing on the market at the time, which was extremely kind of them because it gave me the opportunity to, to listen to music. The only problem was she, they'd given me the cassette recorder, but no cassettes. Um, so I had a, a next door neighbor, a, a girl, she was a couple of years older. And she said, oh, well, I'll give you a few of my cassettes so you can listen in your bedroom to music. And she gave me a cassette by David Bowie. And the first um, song on the cassette was Space Oddity. And I will never forget how many times I kept listening to Space Oddity and all the things it meant to me as a young boy who felt lonely um, in his bedroom in a new city where he knew no one, where he didn't speak the language. But David Bowie was speaking to me directly through Space Oddity, a number he had recorded whilst being high uh, uh, and watching Stanley Kubrick's um, 2001 um, Space Odyssey. Um, that is what music means to me, and I, I, you know, I, I've bridged 44 years since that moment, and still I was listening to this remarkable European artist who was David Bowie, and why do I want to talk about him tonight? Because he exemplifies everything that European music stands for. He was like a butterfly that over the years went back to being cocoon again, and then came out as a new and different butterfly, time and again reinventing himself, restaging himself. And ladies and gentlemen, have you ever known an artist who actually is what the Germans would call a Gesamtkunstwerk, because that's what David Bowie was? Have you ever seen anyone leave the stage in such an incredible way as he has done last week? Have you ever seen anyone do that? 
Nobody will be ever better at leaving the stage as David Bowie has done. And why is this butterfly cocoon, butterfly cocoon, so important for Europe? Because whenever you see his, the phases of his um, development as a persona, it, these phases are so intimately linked with the European history of the last 50 years. Look where he came from, his working class background. The, the only time I thought he'd forgotten about that is when he got his teeth fixed because there were such uh, examples of his background. Um, anyway, he came from that background and then he cast himself into music, listening to others, but very often inspiring others across borders. And when everyone went to the United States, David Bowie went to Berlin and wrote about and made music about the partition of Europe, of this Europe that was so deeply divided. A song like Heroes, which was then later used again at 9-11 when he did the tribute with Paul McCartney in, in Central Park, I think it was. This man stands for where we come from and I hope that he can continue to inspire the young artists we're talking about today because breaking borders is not about taking away borders. It's by acknowledging borders. It's by being aware of the differences, loving the differences, looking at each other, coming from all these different countries in Europe with their different backgrounds and enjoying these different backgrounds, learning from them, sort of absorbing them and then transforming it into something you are that comes closer to you. That is my personal experience of living in many different countries in Europe. All the countries leave some form of sediment in my persona. And we are all people, all of us, but especially the artists, young artists here today, who have been formed by layers of sediment of other artists, of other forms of art, like David Bowie could be a wonderful, a wonderful actor and a terrible actor at the same time in some movies. So this is my message to you today. Breaking borders is not about taking away borders. Breaking borders is about celebrating borders, celebrating difference, celebrating the diversity of who we are as Europeans. Europe is not an institution in Brussels. Europe is not a building with people in it who do administration. Europe is the fact that all the artists that we see performing here tonight are inspired by each other across borders. That is, to me, what Europe is all about. And one word at the end of special thanks to Jules Holland, because he has been, over the years, one of my most important teachers as far as music is concerned. And I really want to ask you not to applaud what I've just said, but to applaud Jules for educating all of us in understanding new and uh, beautiful music. Thank you very much, and please enjoy this evening.